up, things went down. Maybe turn back around. My spider sand screaming that I'm mad. A big storm blew up. A hurricane ran in my coffee cup. Carried me far, far away. And that's why I couldn't make it. Change. Since it's actually been a long time since I've done a complete tour of my RV. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've done a tour since I actually bought it when I actually had nothing inside of it. So I figured today would be a good day to give you a complete tour of my RV so you can get an idea of how I live. So let's start from when you walk in the RV. First thing you'll notice that I've added is an infrared light that comes on when you step onto the threshold to come in. I think it's a great little addition. These are just like maybe four or five bucks to buy and they work well. The next thing you'll notice is that all around my RV I have these little remote controls. And uh, what I've done is I've actually installed these remote LED lights all over the RV. I don't use them much except for when I'm boondocking. But they're a handy little device and uh, they're great for lazy people like me. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more about those later. Above the door you'll notice I have a smart TV and um, the reason I put it there was it was the best viewing area for where I sleep and where I sit. I actually have three televisions. I've got one in the uh, back guest bed or guest bedroom or whatever you want to call it. And I've got one I use outdoors. And speaking of the television, what I've got connected to the TV is a uh, digital PVR. That's the Homeworks little black box on the top so that I can record television and watch it later, which is very handy when you're camping in the bush a long ways from um, anywhere that you can pick up a TV signal. And to make the experience even better, I've got a two terabyte drive. That's the little black box behind the uh, Bose so that I can store a lot of digital files to watch later. I download even things from YouTube, especially documentaries. And I got a DVD player, and on the top I got a little DVD burner that I'm storing there because occasionally I burn stuff. And to make the sound even better, I love the little Bose Mini. It's uh, pound for pound and size for size. It's the best sound you can get out of a little speaker, I think. And of course I got a CO2 detector, gotta have safety. Now I don't have a lot of counter space, so I use the top of my range to store my air fryer, which I actually use a lot. I use it pretty much every day. But I do have an oven, and I do have a microwave up there. I also have a double sink, which is handy at times, although there are many times I would prefer to have more counter space. Hence, that's why I've got one of those Camco RV dish tubs there that I can use the top of the lid for a little extra counter space when I'm preparing food. They're a handy, cheap device, and I highly recommend them. Now, one thing I discovered that would make my living in an RV a little more comfortable is to actually completely collapse the kitchenette. It's just a, a wasted space for me. So it's essentially a seating area and I've got a whole bunch of pillows and uh, Sammy the Pooper, my uh, American Pitbull rescue from Washington State, she spends a lot of time there and right now she's wondering, what the hell are we doing here? What are we doing? Why are we letting a camera inside the RV? Don't worry, Sammy. I'm just going to show the people around the RV. This is uh, a seating area. For me and the dog to sit back, relax, and watch television. I think it's a more effective use of space for me. Now, over on the business end of things, I have a 160 watt Go Power system, which you can tell I'm at 100% right now. Not very great in the winter, especially in Canada, but it sure is handy from spring through fall and definitely avoids me having to use the generator most of the time. Moving down, I've got my new thermostat, which uh, I recommend anybody who has that clunky old thermostat that uh, came with your furnace, get rid of it. Get yourself a nice Honeywell thermostat. And over here, this is 
all the uh, tank monitors and whatnot. Over here, I've got my uh, indoor, outdoor, and humidity monitors. The uh, bottom number shows the outdoor temperature in my battery bay, which is always a little warmer than true outdoor temperature. The um, middle number is the actual humidity, which you want to keep track of. You don't want things to get too humid in your RV. And of course, the uh, 22.0, that's uh, Celsius, that's the interior temperature. Moving over here is another one of these remotes, which I'll show you how that works. That is another one of those remote uh, LED light things, which I can condemn it and turn it off. This one is uh, set up to run two of them. I love these things, they're cheap. I don't know what I paid, five, ten bucks. <laughs> this particular model is very, very battery efficient. It runs completely on triple A batteries, but um, it, it works nice and gives me supplemental light, especially when I'm boondocking. Now, I have bought some models that really are battery inefficient and the batteries die fast, but the model I have, please don't ask me what model it is because the, these are all made in China and I don't even think they have a brand name. But anywho, these are fantastic. The uh, remote removes, so um, the idea is so I can actually uh, point it at different areas to turn lights on or off without having to move around the RV, and it works great for its purpose. And on the back side of the microwave, I do have an electric awning, which I installed in uh, the Palm Springs area a few years ago. And down below that, I've got a power bar. One of the biggest problems with uh, living in an RV is there's not enough power receptacles because they're not designed to live in full time, in spite of the fact that people like me do it. And uh, this one is plugged into the microwave receptacle, and I had rv crazy a few years back drill a big hole for me so that this could be installed thank you very much i also have a two-door fridge and freezer which uh, i think is indispensable if you're going to live in your rv and right next to that i've got a wardrobe closet now one of the updates that i've done is the handles and uh I hated this uh, color of this, uh, I don't know what they call that, trim. It looks brown to you, but uh, depending on the light, it can look reddish, Indian red or whatever you call it. But I hated the handles and hated the color of that. So um, these are the back cupboards above the rear bed, which uh, is where guests sleep or the dog sleeps. And I'll show you what I've done for the front of the RV that I think looks a bit better. I've replaced all the handles with these black ones. I bought a whole bunch of them. I bought every one available. And I still need five more for the back. But all the entire front ones have been replaced. And I prefer that. It looks nicer. Um, I like the black contrast. And along with that, I've added that fake tiling. And I think it looks better. Now if we go all along here, you'll see how I've done that all along the edges to make it look a little bit better and you'll note i have under the counter lighting yeah i like the mood lighting it's uh fairly dim it gives me a little bit of um lighting at night that's not obtrusive and of course that's my water heater propane on off switch now this is the rear entertainment center for any guests I have. This is the rear bedroom and this has a radio, TV and DVD. I got a, I got this for really cheap money, maybe 30, 40 bucks and it mounts underneath the cabinet. So it's really uh, convenient and the monitor articulates and you can even fold it up out of the way if you want so I think this is a really cool device that was really cheap and handy and it has a uh, remote control that's magnetic so uh, if I do have a guest they don't have to watch the same TV that I'm watching now this is the rear bedroom which uh, Sammy is demonstrating her little bed is in the back she spends some of her time back here Oh, she's looking out the window. And these are the cabinets. And moving into the bathroom, 
you'll notice I have a full-size shower and the bathroom is themed to Paris the reason I have themed this to Paris is because uh, I like France but I hate Paris and Paris is a shithole <laughs> and since uh, Paris is a shithole therefore go my bathroom <laughs> Ah, it's just my little artistic expression. You'll even notice I have a Eiffel Tower that lights up on my uh, vanity mirror. <laughs> now, for additional lighting that I put in the shower, I've got these LED light bars. They work great. They're a lot brighter than the original fluorescent lights, which were not energy efficient. Those are still wired up. You can use it if you want, but I prefer these LED light bars in the shower. It's a um, mix. I think it makes the bathroom look brighter. And we got another uh, picture of uh, Gay Paris. And I got some art. Yeah, some art. A Picasso or a Garfunkel <laughs> in the actual bathroom. And uh, there's the sink. I'm sitting on the toilet, so uh, not much to see there. But the only good thing about my bathroom is that it's a pretty decent size. Someone actually could shower while the other person is using the toilet. Not that I would recommend that, but it is possible. Underneath the guest bed is a switch for my remote control of my power inverter. I have a 3000 watt inverter. So this switch allows me to turn on the inverter to run things inside without having to go outside and turn it on or off on the main inverter unit. As for supplementary heat, I like to use radiant heat because it's quiet and um, works just kind of nice. And it's fairly safe if it gets tipped over, it'll turn off and it won't cause a fire. But I do have a furnace that works quite well and I do have three outlets for the heat to blow hot air all over the place. Um, especially when it's really cold, I need to run this to distribute the heat more efficiently and it works quite well I think. Now on the back of my washroom door we got the man rules and some of these man rules are very important like for example um, when a game is on the remote is mine and nope not a mind reader. This is especially important when you have ladies over because uh, us men we really really can't read your mind. <laughs> I also have an ice machine which uh, I can actually run off solar power but I use this mostly in summertime. And I also got a buddy heater which is very handy for boondocking. Highly recommend it. Okay let's go outside now and I'll show you what's going on out there. Now outside I do have a water heater. This is a hybrid electric and propane. You might notice it's actually snowing outside right now. <laughs> this is my third one. The original was propane only and to replace it with a electric and propane only cost one dollar more so I highly recommend if you're going to replace the unit which this is actually a Suburban um, just spend the extra dollar and get a hybrid unit and save some money when you're plugged in that's all I can say. Now one thing I do love about my RV is I have a very large um, underbed compartment for storage and uh, actually use a bit of a of a cleaning and organizing I'll do that once the weather improves a bit the only thing of note in here is that uh, I've got a third battery in a battery box there to allow me more boondocking capacity I think that's important because my battery bay which I'm about to show you has some limitations so this was the only way to go I have a uh, 3 12 volt system I would have loved to go four sixes but uh, I'll show you why I didn't do that. Okay this is the battery bay for my Class C motorhome. A uh, few things of note this is my remote sensor uh, for temperature that sends a signal inside so I know what temperature the battery bank is so I have a rough idea what the outside temperature is even though it's always a bit warmer in here than the actual outside ambient temperature um, and over here I've got a two amp charger Whenever I'm plugged in, I'm always uh, charging it. The reason I've got the two amp charger is because the onboard charger failed and it would have been uh, a nightmare and uh, a hassle to replace the original factory one, which only gives out two amps anyway. So the cheap solution was to just buy a Walmart 
two amp charger and getting back to the batteries uh, these are all brand new um, deep cycle batteries I couldn't go with a six volt system because I don't have the clearance in the battery bank to fit them in so the only option to expand it was to go with three batteries which you just saw the uh, battery box for the third one that fits uh, adjacent to that so that that's what I did there and uh, I like having a little more power when I'm uh, boondocking, especially to run that furnace, which is a big energy hog of 8 to 10 amps an hour while it's running. Now this is the rear access point to my storage, and this is my 3000 watt inverter. And the handy thing about having it here, I can turn it on remotely from inside, but I also have several jacks in here, so if I want to power anything while I'm outside, it's handy for that. And out, out here, and having it installed here, it's out of the way and it's in a cool place to uh, keep it running. This thing actually has survived almost five years. Actually, I think more than five years. And I can't believe it's still running fine after all these years. Because it's a cheap Canadian tire 3000 uh, watt inverter and it's uh, a modified sign. It's not even one of the pure sign units. Made by Eliminator. But it's good to have and it's handy. So this is the outdoor shower. Not much to see here. I do have a sewer flush uh, valve, but I forgot to drain the outdoor shower head and the water inside expanded and it broke, but I'll buy a new one this week. They're very inexpensive to buy, so it's not a really big deal. And they just screw in there, but uh, that's about it for the outdoor shower. But I, I like to have it so I can wash the dog and sometimes do dishes outside. You might notice my windows are also reflectic, which are handy in the summer to reflect as much heat and light away. And they're just uh, built that way. So I like that about them. Gives me a little bit of privacy too in the summertime. And I do enjoy using those spot remote cameras just for my own safety and security, especially when I'm sleeping or I'm away. I highly recommend them as long as you can uh, network them off of a uh, jet pack and uh, they work quite well and uh, keep your RV safe. So that's about it here from snowy southern British Columbia. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I know I haven't done one in a long time, um, if I even have since I bought it, but uh, that's the way it is folks. That's pretty much how I live. I'm pretty comfortable. I really don't have many complaints. If you do have any questions or comments, put them in the uh, comment section below and perhaps I will get back to answering you. In the meantime, folks, it's snowing here, so I think it's time for me to go inside. Keep your wheels to the ground. I'll talk to you soon. Over and out.